You'll have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Doom. Today, trapped. Move along there, you pearly kings and queens. God bless you, constable. Who will buy this beautiful morning? Shut your face. Well, Hamish, here we are amid the bustle and hubbub of London's busy Oxford Street on our, our very first visit. <laughs> on our very first visit to the nation's capital. Why did you say that? Well, it doesn't do any harm. No. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Uh, well, we can't stand around here blethering. Shall we commence our shopping spree? Well, right off, I'm going to buy some bigger shoes. Oh, well, where are you going to get them? That man over there is selling them. Bigger shoe! Bigger shoe! <laughs> well, there's a stroke of luck. He's got a pair of bigger shoes. <laughs> Yes, stupid Tumsy. Come on, let's away into this well-known department store here on London's busy Oxford Street. I'm right behind you. Bigger shoe! I've got a size 12 and a wider fitting. Get your bigger shoe here. <laughs> hey, come on, Hamish, keep up. Oh, I'm doing my best. My old shoes are pinching me something terrible. Well, you got them on the wrong feet. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. They're Mrs. Nochtis. <laughs> Well, I got dressed in a hurry. Uh, never mind, they go very well with that negligee you're wearing. Good morning, sir, madam. Hello. Plaisir de la nuit. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what are you spraying us with, woman? Oh, oh, Plaisir de la nuit. That'll be some kind of perfume. No. It's Mace. I saw that look in your eye. Come along, Hamish. We've no time to exchange pleasantries with this overpainted hussy. Well, I'm not very impressed with your husband's manners, madam. What? <laughs> oh, John. Well, I see. I'm rather taken with this Mace fragrance. It's an improvement on my habitual eau de toilette. Ah, come away, Hamish. You'll end up being sold in Tangiers. <laughs> Should we, uh, should we not get a little something for Mrs. Nochty? Oh, uh, such as what? Aftershave? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, terrible stuff. I don't know what these people see in it. Now, let's get on with our shopping list. I have it here. Let me see. Uh, shortbread, sporran oil, <laughs> one Le Creuse haggis brick, and some more shortbread. Ah. Oh, look, a guide to the store. Mm -hmm. First floor, soft furnishings and marquees. Eh? Fifth floor, children's ironmongery and chemical toilets. Twenty-third <laughs> floor, parachutes. Oh, look, look, there it is. Second floor, lingerie, car wash, fuel and shortbread. Oh. <laughs> then what are we waiting for? Second floor, here we come. <laughs> It's no use. Nobody can hear us. Ah, don't be silly. This well-known store on London's busy Oxford Street is <laughs> packed with customers. It's just a matter of time. Help! We're stuck between floors. We're trapped. Help! Hamish, you're getting hysterical. Well, don't just stand there applauding. Do something. <laughs> All right. Oh! Now, control yourself. Or next time, it's the face. <laughs> All right. I'll put my head between my knees. Oh, what good will that do? Don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> oh, well, you carry on. All we can do is wait until somebody comes along and repairs the mechanism. <laughs> I spy with my little eye something beginning with P. Hamish, will you take your head out from between your knees? Do you give up? Yes. Pantyhose. 
Oh, I did get dressed in a hurry. <laughs> now, come on, come on. We've got to keep our spirits up. What was that poem Mrs. Nochty always says when things look grim? A lady from South Carolina... <laughs> Took a cruise on a great ocean liner. Steady on, old friend. She said to the stoker, I don't like the way this is going. Uh, <laughs> a bit of a joker. Leave it, leave it. It's high time you saw Indochina. Oh, <laughs> that was a close one. I thought you were going to save it. For goodness <laughs> <No>. sake. <laughs> what do you take me for? Well, that's the way Mrs. Nochty tells it. Oh. <laughs> you ask anybody in the Bible class. Oh. <laughs> Jings, this is a fine way to end our trip to London. Aye, it's been a disaster from start to finish. Mm. The coach trip down was dreadful. Uh, Big Tam fell asleep at the wheel. Aye, I thought we'd never set off. No. <laughs> and then, just five miles up the road, he had a blowout. We had to open all the windows. <laughs> if, if you remember, we had to abandon the coach. And the train... The train was no better. Train, we had to change it at Dundee and again at Edinburgh. Just as well we had spare kilts. Yeah. <laughs> and then, when we got to London, the tube, the tube, oh, the tube was a nightmare. Well, I warned you not to have that colonic irrigation. <laughs> uh, fair enough, I should have read the small print, but it, it's hard to read when your eyes are watering. <laughs> To be quite honest, I didn't even know Starbucks were doing them. <laughs> well, you know now. And, and the hotel. Oh. The hotel. Four stars, indeed. Well, be fair, you could see them through the hole in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and now, on top of all that, this. Trapped. Trapped. We're trapped. Will you stop hitting me? <laughs> Will you take your head out from between my knees? <laughs> I spy. Stop it. <laughs> oh. Help! 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 Mr. Hemish, Mr. Dougal, is that you? Mrs. Noxty? Where are you? We're stuck between floors. Here on this escalator. <laughs> Yes, I can see you now. We've been here for hours. Aye. <laughs> Waiting for somebody to get the thing moving. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing here, Mrs. Nocte? I came down to see my son, James. He's been working here as a doorman ever since things went barely up at the BBC. <laughs> He's lucky to have the work. I heard his pal, John Humphreys, got a job at the listening bank, but he didn't last a week. <laughs> Oh, very fascinating, I'm sure. But, Mrs. Anne, are you going to rescue us? Oh, the sooner the better. My claustrophobia's getting worse with all these people pushing past us on their way up. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, yes. oh. Gangway. Oh, oh. Move your ass. Oh. Oh. Violet's lovely, Violet. Oh. Oh. You shoot. Oh. Oh. Help, 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 help. Just keep calm, the pair of you. As you know, I used to be a midwife. So, take deep breaths, put your heads between your knees, and whatever you do, don't push. I spy with my little eye something beginning with H. I thought you said the ointment was working a treat. No. Well, no, no, no. Look, a helicopter. What? Hello down there. Your, your lordship, how did you get your helicopter into the store? Oh, they know me here. So, what seems to be the problem? No problem, the ointment worked a treat. <laughs> your lordship, they're stuck on a broken down escalator between floors. How awful. I've an idea, Mrs. Nochty. Strap yourself into this leather and nylon harness. <laughs> I'm not falling for that one again. <laughs> Get into the harness, then I can winch you down to pluck Hamish and Dougal from the jaws of doom. Oh, very well. I'm ready. <laughs> she falls red every time. Now, where's my webcam? 
<laughs> you land chap. No, all right, party pooper. Here we go. Winching Mrs. Nocty into position now. Ooh! Ooh! Mrs. Nocty. Yes? This is very important. Could you pick me up some of that crystallized ginger as you swing by? <laughs> right, you hold. What's happening? Here she comes, swinging through the air. Dougal, you grab one leg. Hamish, you grab the other. Then what? Make a wish. <laughs> no, no. Hang on tight. Up we go. Up. Oh. Up. Oh. oh, don't look down. Don't look up. <laughs> James, I didn't know they still wore those. Now, two of you climb up Mrs. Nocty and scramble into the helicopter. I hope nobody's attempting the south face. <laughs> Mind where you're putting your feet. Why are you wearing my shoes? <laughs> they go with the pantyhose. Oh. Oh. oh, well, here we both are in the helicopter. Why did you say that? It seemed appropriate. <laughs> Shings! Mrs. Nocty is still dangling on the cable. Yes. Right, where to, gents? <laughs> oh, the shortbread department, please. Certainly. Back home again. Ah, why didn't I say that? You had the chance. <laughs> oh, I can see the metropolis has gone to somebody's head. Your ladship, it was very kind of you to give us a lift all the way back to the Glen. It was the least I could do for a pair of stranded fellow Highlanders. Shame about Mrs. Nochty, though. I, I think we lost her somewhere over the Humber. <laughs> the cable snapped at 15,000 feet. Still, all's well that ends well. <laughs> <laughs> I will say one thing. That shortbread department was a bit of a disappointment. Well, what do you expect from a well-known department store in London's busy Oxford Street? <laughs> they wouldn't know shortbread from a shag pile carpet. Another piece of shortbread, your ladship? Rather. But could you hoover it first this time? <laughs> oh, don't be a fusspot. There you are. It's a lovely pattern. Nice and chewy. You bastards! <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at the state of you, woman, all soot and seaweed. Jettisoned over the humber, swept out to sea. If it hadn't been for that nice troll, the captain who netted me off the coast of Mogadishu, I wouldn't be here at all. That's you and me finished the lot of you. I've been to hell and back. Well, may you hang your heads between your knees. <laughs> what have you to say for yourselves? Mrs. Mrs. Nochty? Yes? You'll have had your tea. <laughs> You'll have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Pryor and Graham Dunn, with Alison Stadman as Mrs. Nochty and Jeremy Hardy as the left. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Karen Street, Kylie Davis, Ros Stephen and Scott Hunt. The producer was John Mixman.